welcome back to Asgard and welcome to this is just kind of gonna be a uh, just a random video um, uh, oh hi there was uh, left me a comment on a video the other day and was wondering about more like a mid-tier power system and so I figured I'd just come into a creative world here and uh, for Sky Factory and show you you know if you're if you're wanting something more mid-tier um, I know big reactors can be mid-tier if you set up like a smaller one instead of like the big one that we built um, but uh, you can do them as small as like a 3x3 three three and they do work um, and produce a decent amount of power but um, <clears throat> there is other options that we can set up and that's what we're going to look at today um, for starters two of these systems will will require um, like some kind of crop input and you know we've set them up on there but just real quick you know you'll want your oh you know what I never gave this one a upgrade um, you'll want your just your harvester and your planter setup is the easiest way um, you can also do ender IO farming stations or you know just whatever you want um, and you just have your harvester pumping out and um, uh, pumping any kind of seeds back into uh, this planter here and then um, any output you'll pump it you know wherever it goes and then you just have energy ran to both the machines um, in this case I'm using potatoes so I could put a filter on here um, saying you know I only want potatoes because you do have the chance to make the poisonous potatoes and you can't replant those but um, you can also just fill in all these slots and say um, you know don't consume the stack is another option um, and then um, you know and then just let that run for a minute and then any excess you can pump out or you can round robin it it's really just up to you um, but you know that's just basic uh, basic crop setup and everything that we've done before on there um, so the first setup I'm going to show you here is actually one that doesn't require a um, any kind of uh, power source or anything or any kind of uh, uh, crop input. You just basically set it, leave it there, and it makes power. And um, it's something that you can kind of build up on. But these like solar panels right here, Solar Flux is a mod I think a lot of people might overlook when they're um, let me actually turn this music off it's getting loud creative mode music I forget about it okay um, <clears throat> uh, sorry I don't want it actually totally off I just want that turned down okay um, solar flux is a, a mod I think a lot of people might forget about um, but it does produce a crazy amount of power. Now these first ones here, um, they just require some mirrors, wood and redstone, and that's just uh, sol any kind of glass and aluminum. They're pretty cheap, um, but these really don't generate a whole lot of power. Um, solar panel, the second tier um, is going to require um, just eight of those standard solar panels and then a redstone reception coil. Um, the tier three requires, you know, uh, or yeah, the tier three requires a few of the tier twos and so on. It is something that you kind of have to build into. <clears throat> so it is kind of, kind of expensive initially to set up like a good one. But right here, I've got the tier fives, which really aren't super, super expensive. Um, you know, they do require four of the tier fours, um, reinforced machine frames. Redstone energy cells, um, and then these photovoltaic cells, um, and these you kind of have to work up to. Um, you just put some glowstone in there, and then for the tier two, you use a tier one and some clay in the induction smelter. Um, oh, you can't use the alloy smelter for that. And then the tier ones are just mirrors and lappies, so they're really not that expensive, especially in Sky Factory to set up but um, let me throw down just a let's throw it over here just a vibrant capacitor bank and show you the um, 
how much energy that they really produce. Um, so we have 300 million storage in this, and if we just throw down, say, two of these, um, oh, let me set it to day, actually. Uh, not new. All right, if you notice, with just two of these, we're producing 2,048 RF a tick. So, um, what, 1,024 each, and um, these are, you know, you can just expand this as big as you want, um, and they do um, scale accordingly as far as the power input. So, um, honestly, you know, this thing produces, uh, what was it, 12,000 a tick, I think. So right now, this is producing as much as that big reactor. So now granted, the solar panels are only going to work during the day, but with the massive amount of power um, that's being generated by those, you don't really have to worry about it too much as long as you build like a big power storage. But um, um, they do, they are kind of like a tier crafting thing. So you kind of have to work up to them. Uh, little by little, but it's more of just a, a tedious thing to craft than anything. So the next thing um, I'm going to quickly show you here is, let me pull out the things here, 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 and yeah. Um, we're going to set up some uh, a VAT system from Ender.io. Um, it's probably the weakest of the three powers that I'm going to show you, but it is expandable, very, very easy, and um, not too, too hard to set up. So um, you can just drop an aqueous accumulator into the water, you know, to generate your water um, or any other method that you prefer. Um, oh, wait, not item conduit, my bad. Um, and then... We'll just run these just right over here. And I'm going to avoid that torch. Okay. Um, and the first thing you're going to need for the combustion generator setup is these vats from Ender.io. And if you notice, this is filled up with water here. It also does require a little bit of power. Um, and of course, starting out, you can always supply that with. Um, where's my creative? There we go. Uh, you can always supply that with, um, you know, magmatic dynamos and stuff like we have um, in the past. So, um, there we go. And we'll just run power over here. And then what this thing, will, what you'll need to do is first off, you're going to want to make something called hooch. And it's a uh, Ender IO liquid. And to craft hooch, it just requires some sugar from sugarcane, and then apples, potatoes, uh, poisonous potatoes, wheat, seeds, or no, not wheat, sorry, seeds, potatoes, uh, apples, and so on. So I, for this, oh, it does take wheat, my bad. Um, for this, though, I would suggest just a potato farm for that, because it's pretty simple. And then for the sugarcane, um... You know, you can just set up, if you want, just um, one of these Tier 1 crafters or something um, from RF Tools. And um, then set up maybe like a vanilla sugarcane farm. It doesn't have to be anything too crazy. It's not going to require just an absolute ton of sugar. Um, and then, you know, you can just set up your recipe here to do sugar. And it's going to craft your sugar, and then you can just pump it into this just like this and um, that'll keep that supply with sugar and then your harvesters of course you can pump those into the vat to supply your potatoes um, I'm just gonna grab some instead of spending this whole video running cables and whatnot because um, I think that part of it's pretty self-explanatory but now this is gonna start turning this water into hooch and um, it does take a second to get started, but once it gets going, um, it is fairly fairly decent speed at it. And you can actually set up more of these vats, you know, down through here and uh, have them all making hooch. And then you're going to want another, um, 
another vat next to that. And there's a couple different options here that you could do as far as a liquid goes. Um, you could use, um, or you could create the fire water or rocket fuel. Um, fire water is going to produce um, energy at a slower rate, but it's going to burn a bit longer. Oh, I don't want that. <laughs> and um, rocket fuel, however, is the one I, I generally suggest. It does produce more power in the long run, and it produces power uh, faster. Or no, it produces, rocket fuel I think produces slightly lower power, but not by much. It's by like 50 RF or something per bucket. It's really not a major difference, um, but it does burn up a bucket in about seven seconds, whereas the fire water um, burns it up in about 13 seconds or something like that. And um, <clears throat> these rocket, I, the rocket fuel is just a lot faster. It's um, like double the RF per tick, so I tend to go with it. And what you can do is you can just throw down your... Um, you know your conduit and just connect these two so this is going to start filling that one up with hooch and then what you're going to need in addition to the hooch let's say you want them to do the rocket fuel um, just redstone and gunpowder which both of these gunpowder you could generate with a creeper essence farm um, feeding a crafter kind of like how I set up the eulorium for the big reactor um, the redstone of course you could use a redstone essence farm from you know both of those from magical crops so pretty easy to automate with um, you know with the addition of magical crops fire water if you're interested in that <clears throat> is um, redstone and blaze powder so chances are you have a ton of blaze powder from um, saving stuff and whatnot and uh, if not there's actually a magical crops farm that you can do with that as well so but I'm gonna grab redstone and gunpowder and we'll throw that in there and start making the uh, rocket fuel and then once it's done with that you know I generally build like a little buffer tank here it doesn't have to be anything crazy um, uh, oops. I want uh, just some tanks from open blocks and that way you can um, just store the store the liquid and kind of have a buffer for um, your fire water. So, and oh, I've got that on. Damn it. Okay, had that on insert. Extract always active. There we go. So it'll start <coughs> building up with fire water and. Um, course then now that we've got that done you're going to pump it into your combustion generators and let's see here here we go and let's see you're also going to want a liquid coolant for this as well so we're just going to pump in, um, I don't know what I'm doing here, <laughs> you're going to pump in water just to use as the liquid coolant. So if you notice it's now generating 160 RF a tick and um, it's doing one millibucket per tick. So um, uh, yeah, seven ticks per millibucket. It's going through water at a slower rate. Um, so I, was, I don't know why I was saying it was a bucket every seven seconds. It's a lot longer than that, but um, um, it does take a while for it to burn through this rocket fuel. So really, if you have these vats being fed, um, you know, you can set up additional combustion generators, which is what you're going to want to do. And um, let's see, there we go. And um, that way it'll start feeding all of these. And um, then after that, you can just run your power out as usual. And um, and you'll have that set up. So 
Uh, if you notice, it's producing... Uh, we'll have to give it a second to bottom to fix out. But uh, 480 RF a tick is not bad at all. And that's only with three of the combustion generators set up. Like I said, I mean, you can... you can. This is a really basic starter setup. This stuff... Um, these blocks aren't expensive, really. Um, and it's... Like I said, it's pretty easy to automate um, just using the um, harvesters from... Uh, Mine Factory Reloaded. Also, the um, farming block from Ender.io works just fine as well. So, um, And now the last setup I'm going to show you is a bit more... Um, a bit more to it, uh, to say the least. So, um, it's an immersive engineering setup. It's pretty powerful. I've set them up in the past. Um... But there is quite a bit of setup time to it. So the first thing that you're going to want to build, um, you can get this engineer's manual. Um, here we go. And it's not, it's just a book and a lever. And then you can open it up and look through all this stuff. A lot of the immersive engineering stuff is a multi-block. Um, you know, as far as the really good stuff, like the lightning rod, for example, isn't that expensive. Um, if you do have a lot of storms, it seems like on your map, you might build this because when it gets hit by lightning, it does produce an absolute ton of power. Um, but it, you know, of course it only generates the power when it's struck by lightning. So, but we're going to be looking at the diesel, um, the biodiesel setup for this. And, um, you can find it under the heavy machinery page and, um, so basically the first thing you're going to want to build is two of these multi-blocks here for your um, your squeezer and your fermenter. And now the squeezer, you can use melon seeds, pumpkin seeds, normal seeds, or industrial hemp seeds. Um, I tend to go with like the industrial hemp because it does produce extra millibuckets each time over, you know, just the normal ones. But any of them work just fine, so... Um, and then the fermenter, you're going to use melons, wheat, sugar canes, apples, potatoes. You know, all of them are equal as far as millibuckets. Um, I find sugar cane to be pretty easy because you can use just a vanilla, um, you know, just a vanilla sugar cane farm for that. But um, melons are also really, really nice if you want to automate those. So it's really just... Um, you know, preference on that. But now you can, um, in here, you can actually see the multi block structure and you can hit like play. Yeah, here. And you can tab through the, you know, the different levels of it. Um, but it's just light engineering blocks pretty much everywhere. And then your fermenter or your squeezer around the edges here pretty easy and these blocks aren't terribly expensive um, let me see here the um, well, oh yeah it shows right here um, it's just gonna take a bit of iron which as you know with Sky Factory we have a ton of iron so um, it's a pretty cheap and easy way <coughs> to um, to set up a it's really powerful power system actually and so we'll build these two out really quick and by the way by the end of this build you're gonna have um, four big multi blocks set up so and then you can just um, right click on the center here and that'll form the multi block and then we can open it up and see there's a nice little GUI in here um, so let's grab ourselves some, let me throw this stuff away, let's get some industrial hemp seeds, and then some, I don't know, sugar cane, and put these into here, yeah. And then your seeds into the squeezer. And once again, these do require a little bit of power, you know, to get started. But um, 
before long, once you have this system up and running, it's not going to um, really need an outside source of power because you'll be producing way more than you're actually using. So. Oh. Hmm. <laughs> Can I not connect the power with these? Oh, yeah, that's right, the top. I forgot about that. A lot of the immersive engineering stuff, the power input is on the top, and that's due to the fact that um, you can use the immersive engineering wires to connect everything up uh, with that mod, and those do tend to work better, <laughs> like as far as setting up, um, hooking into the top of things. So, But if you notice, we're now producing plant oil and ethanol. And so after that point, we're going to pump this into a refinery. So the refinery block is crafted with just steel scaffolding, light engineering blocks, sheet metal blocks, and heavy engineering blocks. And now this one is a bit more to it. Um, let's see, sheet metal and steel scaffolding. All right, so we'll set our light engineering blocks up like this and then um, heavy engineering on the sides here and then just steel scaffolding <clears throat> now this build is going to require a lot of iron and steel so just a heads up but um, of course we've already covered you know making that and everything um, in our series it's not too bad to automate um, steel creation so it's not you know it gives you kind of something to use all the iron for because I've been I have a ton of iron I've been using a lot but I've been generating it at such a ridiculous rate and then we got our sheet metal there and then sheet metal on the top like this and then once you get this set up um, just right click the front and it makes this refinery multi-block which that's one thing I love about the immersive engineering stuff is the multi-blocks look amazing so uh, once again this is going to require just a little bit of power coming in from the back so we'll just run this cable here and if we open it up see we've got this nice GUI here now where did the okay here it is um, your fluids will pump in from the sides here. There's two specific sides. So we're going to pump that one. It says it connects, but it, well, actually the ender fluid might connect. Most of the times I've built this, it's been with like, um, <clears throat> build craft pumps or something. But if you're having issues with inputting the liquid, um, that is the appropriate slot there for it. So if you notice the ethanol and the plant oil is filling up, um, these don't actually have to be set to always active, I just did it. Um, and it's producing this biodiesel. So this is the fuel that we want. And the, the last multi-block that we're going to build here can run on other stuff, like if you're not playing skyblocks, you can run it with the fuel from... Um, uh, oh... Mine Factory Reloaded, I believe. Let me see. Um, but you can run it with, um, like with the oil and everything. Um, biofuel does work from Mine Factory Reloaded. Um, hmm. Must not have it in here. I can't remember the name of the mod, but anyway, you... Uh, does this not even have oil? Okay. Well, never mind, but um, a lot of mods add like the oil, um, like in the water and stuff. I can't think of the mods. I know, I'm pretty sure Mine Factory Reloaded does it and all that, but um, anyway, if you see goop, big black goop shooting out of the ground, uh, <laughs> you can use that oil in here. So, um, that's an option as well however this setup is self-sufficient so I do like this but the actual 
uh, machine that we're going to use to use the biodiesel um, is this diesel generator here. It's under power wires and generators. Um, this is probably your most expensive of the multi-blocks because it is primarily steel. But um, for this, you're just going to need heavy engineering blocks, radiator blocks, and generator blocks. So <clears throat> um, you're just going to do a 3x3 three three of heavy engineering and then um, is it, uh, okay. the radiator blocks on the front and the generator blocks on the back here. And then again, and then the last layer doesn't have any generator blocks on it. So I probably should have just made a diamond wand for this episode. Um, forgive me. And then you can just, you know, right click it. I um, can't remember. There we go. It's on the uh, generator block side or the radiator block side. So this is another really nice multi-block from Immersive Engineering and this one um, you know if you try to right click it there is no GUI for this one so um, just be aware of that now your liquid inputs are back here so I kinda built it, oh right here too okay um, so we'll just run our fluid conduits over to there and if you notice, it's starting to drain the ethanol out. <clears throat> and then we can just hook our uh, energy conduits up right here. And the nice thing is, if you notice, this thing is making like this weird sound, like it's shutting on and off. It's only going to run when there's somewhere to put the power. So every time I add one of these conduits, it um, you know starts filling it up really, really quick. But if we build out this multi-block... Vibrant Capacitor Bank, if you notice, we're getting 4,096 RF a tick on a totally self-sufficient system. Um, and honestly, just a good uh, 7x7 or 9x9 MFR for each of these for like the, um, you know, whatever seed and whatever plant you end up using is plenty for this to run one of these. Um, and of course, you can add on, build more of these anytime you want, and the power production is really really nice plus they look cool and they sound cool I think so we'll actually be building some of these in our Sky Factory Let's Play series because it's just one of those things I don't really need the power but it's just aesthetically pleasing for me to see this thing running and you know all this like refinery system set up and everything I just love it so we will be setting that up um, you know later on down the road and uh, I'll cover it again so if you watch this video and then um, you know I end up covering it again I do apologize but that's just a heads up but this thing does run through ethanol at a decent rate so R64 <clears throat> didn't last too too long on it but um, like I said you know I don't have anything plugged into this to make it run so but yeah as far as mid-tier power systems those are the three that I would suggest <clears throat> because um, you know they're pretty 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 nice now we'll say the combustion generators from Ender IO they take a little bit more setup than the lava um, thing is with Sky Factory and lava you can really just set up as much lava as you want and generate just a ton of power from that that's why I went on ahead to the big reactor um, but if you're having issues with lava production for your magmatic dynamos, just uh, make sure and put some of that uh, pyrothium. Um, this blazing pyrothium right here. Oops. And you can get that just by um, doing your pyrothium dust in a magma crucible. And... Um, then you can get it out with the fluid transposer. So you're, it's going to require a thousand millibuckets. So um, what four blaze, uh, pyrothium dust per bucket? But it does, like I said, it does generate lava at about four or five t times the speed of standard lava. So you know if if the lava um, production is your issue, you can always switch to that, and it should you know be fine. But as far as mid tier, uh, these are the three setups that I would suggest you know, prior to the big reactors and everything. So, uh, if you notice, this thing's still 
kicking out a ton of power. It's actually about to fill up that multi-block already. So, um, but yeah, I guess that's going to be it for this video. If you have any other questions on any of this stuff, just let me know. Um, there are other options out there. There's so many power options, you know, it would take forever to show them all off. Um, but I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope that it helps um, for anybody that's having, you know, questions or issues about a mid-tier power system. I hope that this helps. And um, I did get to show off some of some of my personal favorites as far as that goes too because I really like all three of these, you know. Um, but anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please comment, like, subscribe, uh, share. And until next episode, take care and I will see you then.